Hannah is really cute. The moment the door opened and I heard her name from James voice, I froze. I was wondering who it might be, and hearing her name confirmed it, it was my sister Hannah. Jamie kept calling out to Hannah repeatedly. Shivering, I suddenly came to my senses. I knew I had to record what was happening, so I used my phone to capture the moment and then quietly left. Later, when the two of them came out of the bedroom and saw me, they looked really shocked. I told them I had sent the video to Kevin and we needed to talk about what to do next, all four of us together. At this, Hannah looked even more scared. What do you mean? she asked. Just what I said, I replied, holding up my phone. I found the video. My name is Sandra. I'm a 50-year-old housewife with twin boys in sixth grade. Twins run in our family. I have an identical twin sister, Hannah. We never really felt like sisters, but more like rivals. Growing up, I was always compared to Hannah. She was always seen as the cute and friendly one, while I was shy and quiet. Because of this, people naturally paid more attention to her. Even though we were rivals, I truly loved Hannah. She was always smiling and popular, something I wished I could be. But Hannah didn't feel the same way about me. When we were kids, I always ended up with the roles in games that nobody else wanted. For instance, whenever we played tag and had to choose who was it by playing rock, paper, scissors, Hannah would pressure me into being it so she wouldn't have to. I had no choice but to agree. Hannah's tricky ways weren't just during playtime. In sixth grade, we were picking roles for a school play about Snow White. I wasn't much of an actress and wanted to be the narrator but I got a cold and missed school on the day they gave out the roles. Hannah said she would tell the teacher I wanted to be the narrator. I trusted her and felt relieved. However, when I came back to school, I found out I was the lead role. Why am I the lead? I asked a friend, shocked. Hannah said you wanted to be the lead, they replied. I was stunned, I never said that. It turned out that as we were getting older, no one else wanted the embarrassing role of Snow White, so they chose me, the quiet girl who wasn't there to say no. The teacher thought it was strange I wanted the lead since I was usually so shy. Hannah had told the teacher, she wants to but she's too shy to volunteer. Let this be a chance for her to shine. I cried, insisting I couldn't do it and didn't want to. But all the other roles were already taken. With pressure from teachers and parents, I went through with it. Surprisingly, the play was a hit. Everyone praised me, teachers, parents, friends. But Hannah wasn't happy. She said anyone could have done that, and getting praise for such a small thing was silly. She began to really show her dislike for me. After that, she stopped asking me to play with her. It hurt at first, but then I realized I was free from being pushed into roles I didn't want. I made other friends and started to enjoy school. In middle school, many didn't even know Hannah, and I were twins. We became so distant, hardly speaking at school and not looking alike at all. We asked to be in different classes, and I was enjoying my own life. Then one day, as I was studying for high school entrance exams, Hannah came over. Studying? Have you decided which high school you're applying to? Yeah, I'm thinking of going to the newest high school. It's close to our house and quite competitive. I had been working hard for five years because I really wanted to get into a particular high school. But when Hannah heard about my choice, she laughed. Hey, that high school? You've got to be kidding, right? Why don't you just go to be high school with me? It sounds like you wouldn't even need to study much for that. Hannah always seemed to get her way but I didn't want her making decisions about my high school too. For the first time, I stood up to her. I've decided to go to a high school. You don't know if it's impossible for me. If you don't want to study, that's fine, but don't get in my way. I turned back to my textbook, but Hannah was upset by my response. That tone to your older sister? She said angrily, then grabbed my textbook and threw it on the floor. What are you doing? Even if you study, it's a waste. You know you're destined to be my slave and go to be high school with me. That day, we ended up fighting physically. 
Our parents heard the noise and came to separate us, but by then, my textbook was torn to pieces. More than that, my heart was broken by hearing Hannah's true feelings about me. I realized she just saw me as a target for all the unpleasant things. But I didn't give up on studying. Luckily, my parents got me a new textbook. With their support, Hannah no longer interfered with my studies, and I was able to focus and successfully got into my chosen school. Hannah, as she had initially said, barely studied for the exams and went to B High School. We went to different high schools, attended different universities, and started our careers. As an adult, I began living on my own, and that's when I met a man named James. James and I were hired at the same time and felt a closeness because we were from the same area. When he asked me out, I felt like I was dreaming. I actually like you, Sandra. I'd be happy if you'd go out with me, he said. Hearing those words made me incredibly happy. I had feelings for James too, but I had never had the courage to admit such feelings openly. I wasn't pretty like Hannah and hadn't really dated during my school days so it was hard to believe that James felt the same way about me. Being in a relationship for the first time made me really happy. Since we started dating, I've tried my best to make him happy by cooking meals and preparing lunchboxes for him. James began visiting my apartment more often, and we started living almost like a couple. Sandra, I'll cook dinner tonight, James would say. It wasn't just me doing things for him. James helped a lot with the housework. Doing chores together was fun, and I began to think we could be a good married couple. Five years into our relationship, we decided to get married, which made me very happy, but one thing worried me. You're a twin, right? I'd like to meet your sister, James brought it up. Over the five years we were dating, I had told him about having a twin sister, Hannah, but I had never introduced him to her. I hadn't even told her about having a boyfriend since our big fight in middle school had driven a deep wedge between us. Yeah, that's right, but we're getting married, so it's inevitable that Hannah and James will meet. I was anxious about how Hannah might react, but I knew I had to introduce them at some point. When I finally called Hannah after a long time, she seemed surprised by my news. Married? Since when? She grazed her voice. I had told my parents, but it seems Hannah hadn't heard about it yet. Yeah, and I want to introduce you to the man I'm going to marry. Oh, uh, I'm busy you know. Well, if you insist, I guess I could meet him. Hannah was as condescending as ever. So I asked her to make some time for us. Hannah hadn't changed since we were kids. I figure I had to be the adult and humble myself. We went back home to meet Hannah on her day off. James suggested we all have a meal together with our parents, so we arranged to meet at a restaurant. On the day, we went to the restaurant, but Hannah was late. Hannah's late. I thought she said she'd be on time. Sorry, James. Don't worry about it. She'll show up eventually. Let's just wait a bit longer, I said. Both my parents and I felt bad for keeping James waiting. Fifteen minutes past the scheduled time, Hannah showed up in a flashy dress. Sorry, did you wait? We did. What's with the outfit? Well, it's kind of like a meet and greet, right? Thought I'd dress up. I was frustrated with Hannah for being late, especially since she took extra time to dress up. Our parents just smiled a bit, but I wish she had messaged us about being late. I felt like it was immature for an adult, but I kept quiet to avoid any issues. We introduced Hannah and James to each other. Hannah made several rude comments during their first meeting, asking James many personal questions about his time with me, as if it were an interview. Despite her parents trying to stop her, Hannah kept going, saying she wanted to know what kind of man I was marrying. James was nice about it and answered her questions. By the end of the meal, I was really tired. James then mentioned how different Hannah and I were, calling her always smiling, good at conversation, and cute. He even joked, if I'd met her first, I was shocked because I had told him I was uncomfortable around Hannah. His comment hurt me. Why don't you marry Hannah then? She even said you were handsome. I snapped back. 
James quickly apologized, saying it was just a joke, and he was happy to have met me, not Hannah. He tried to make light of it by saying Hannah was nice, and that we shouldn't be jealous of each other. We should get along as a family, now that we're adults. Although I had my doubts, I knew our parents wanted Hannah and me to get along. But I wanted James to be on my side, not pushing me to be closer to Hannah. Still, arguing seemed too much trouble, so I just nodded along to what James said. A few days later, Hannah messaged me, Isn't James too good for you? Should I take him off your hands? I was upset by her message. What are you talking about? I replied instinctively, and she called me immediately. Hannah insulted me over the phone and laughed, saying it was unbelievable that someone as plain as me would get married before her. She said James was high-earning and well-educated and asked why not hand him over to her since we were twins and had always shared everything. I yelled back at her, telling her not to say stupid things. I couldn't stand James being treated like an object, nor the idea that we always shared everything. In reality, I was always just someone for Hannah to dump the things she didn't want. That night, I told James about the call, warning him to be careful around Hannah. However, James took it lightly and laughed it off, saying it was nice to be liked so much and not to worry because Hannah wasn't serious. I was frustrated because he didn't seem to understand the potential seriousness of her words. Do you doubt my feelings? It's okay because I say it's okay, he reassured me. Despite him being a great person, I felt like James had changed after meeting Hannah. He would always defend her just because she was my sister, which left me feeling dissatisfied. But James told me not to worry so much and believed that nothing Hannah could do would affect him. Realizing I was unsettled by her words made me see that I hadn't fully trusted James. He was right. I decided to trust him and ignore Hannah's spiteful messages. Fortunately, Hannah didn't interfere with us anymore and I hoped we could become good sisters and have a happy married life. Years went by, and after I turned 45, my parents told me that Hannah had gotten married. I had blocked her and wasn't in contact, though we occasionally saw each other at our parents' home. Hannah would insult me, being nearly 45 and still unmarried. She seemed resentful and was avoiding me. I was surprised to hear she got married, as she was quite picky but I was genuinely happy for her. When I learned that Hannah had married, I realized how harsh I had been when she got married only after I did. Later, through my parents, Hannah apologized to me, and we started communicating again. Indeed, Hannah had changed, becoming much calmer than before. It was as if she had returned to the Hannah I once loved. I never thought the day would come when Hannah and I could laugh together again. I was very happy when Hannah introduced me to her husband, Kevin, who was about six years older than us. He seemed to really care for Hannah, which made me feel reassured. After we both got married, Hannah and I became closer, and our parents were very happy to see us getting along. I wanted to make up for the time we had spent apart. Then, a few years later, something happened. I became ill at work and had to leave early. I tried to inform James, but he was out on business, so I left a message with a colleague and went straight home. As soon as I entered the house, I felt something was off it felt like someone was inside, even though the house was supposed to be empty. I thought it might be a burglar. I quietly entered and listened closely. I could hear noises and voices coming from the bedroom. Standing silently in front of the bedroom, I recognized James's voice. The nature of his voice made my heart sink. It was clearly the sound of an intimate moment, and the creaking of the bed confirmed my fears. I didn't need to see inside to know what was happening, and my hands trembled. Thinking James was cheating, I decided to catch him in the act. I carefully opened the door with my smartphone in hand, ready to record. What I saw inside the bedroom was even more shocking. Hannah is really cute, isn't she? I heard James's voice clearly as the door opened. Hearing him say her name, I froze. The female voice was indeed Hannah's. James kept foolishly repeating Hannah's name. Trembling, I recorded the scene and quietly left. 
I sat in the dining area in shock for a while. I was supposed to be home early because I felt unwell, but the shock made me forget my illness. I just stared blankly at my phone, waiting for this nightmare to end. A few minutes later, the bedroom door opened. I'll head back to work now, so lock up, said a voice. Okay, it'd be nice if we could live together soon, another voice responded. Hearing this, I hurriedly stood up. Noticing the noise, James and Hannah saw me in the hallway. Sandra, why are you here? James exclaimed, turning pale. Why? This is my house, right? But why is Hannah here? Aren't you both supposed to be at work? I asked. Hannah looked away for a moment, but then smirked defiantly. Why do you think? You wanted it from my own mouth, didn't you? James tried to stop her, but Hannah wouldn't be silenced. I've always hated how you look down on me. Happiness and James don't suit you. Hannah declared she'd take everything. I just smiled and replied, Is that so? Then I'll let you have James, Hannah, but don't think you can take my happiness. Hannah seemed annoyed by my comeback and glared at me. I spoke directly to her, yeah, I sent the video to Kevin. Let's discuss this with the four of us soon. Hannah's face turned pale instantly. What do you mean? She asked. Just what I said. If you want James, Kevin should know about this, shouldn't he? Hannah lunged at me, but James tried to calm her down. Just then, the smartphone in Hannah's bag rang. At the sound, Hannah froze. Looks like Kevin's calling, isn't it? I said. Hannah hesitated and looked at her bag, but she didn't answer the call. The room was silent except for the sound of the phone. After a while, it stopped ringing, and then my phone rang. Sandra, I'm truly sorry. Please forgive Hannah. Can you cover for her with Kevin? If not, Hannah will lose everything, James said, trying to protect her. Hannah started sobbing next to him, like she was the victim. I knew Kevin was not only Hannah's husband, but also the president of the company where she worked. If Kevin found out about her cheating, he might start divorce talks, and she could lose her job. I said, I can't cover for her. James, as usual, defended Hannah, which infuriated me. Thinking Hannah is the only one who's going to lose her family and job is a huge mistake. I shouted, making James flinch and start sweating. He seemed to realize the gravity of the situation. Just so you know, I've also sent the video to the company's main email, including your department and name, I told them. By then, Kevin's call had ended, and James and Hannah looked desperate. After kicking them out, I called Kevin. Sorry to disturb you at work. It's about the video, right? He asked gently. Yes, it involves James, I replied. I'm sorry for asking this of you, Kevin said. He had felt something was off with Hannah. It might have been plausible for the old Hannah, but the current Hannah truly loved him. I didn't think she would cheat, and I had convey as much to Kevin, but just in case. Kevin had asked me to gather evidence if Hannah did something questionable. That's why I was able to film so calmly. Please don't apologize. I'm glad I could capture evidence of James' unfaithfulness. If you hadn't asked me, I probably wouldn't have thought to do it so calmly, I told Kevin. I admitted to him that it was shocking to find out about an affair, especially with my own sister. I had every right to be angry. My sons will be home soon, so let's talk another time, I said to Kevin and hung up. Tears flowed endlessly but for my sons and for my future, I knew I had to be strong. That day, I carried on with my usual routines, and after the kids had settled down for the night, James came home. Were you with Hannah? I asked him. James, clearly in a bad mood, snapped back, I got called into HR because of you. The decision on my punishment will come later. What are you going to do about this? The way James turned the blame on me, Making me out to be the villain, despite his actions, almost made me laugh. Crying over such a man was a waste of time. There's nothing to be done. Do as you please. You understand the situation, right? If we divorce, I'm taking the kids. Still want to divorce. His attempt to use our sons as leverage was pathetic, and I told him so. What are you talking about? 
You think you'll get custody after likely losing your job? Divorce is a foregone conclusion. Stop being ridiculous, I said. James had nothing to say. Of course, getting caught in adultery during work hours, dismissal seemed inevitable. Was he still so clueless about the gravity of his actions? If so, then he's incredibly foolish. I'll be leaving tomorrow, I told him. Wait a minute, can't we consider starting over? Can't you forgive just one affair? James, now taking a submissive stance, began apologizing. Just one time, I asked back. According to Kevin, Hannah's behavior had been odd for several months. Given Kevin's job mostly involves being out for sales, there's a good chance she might have been returning home like this just one time. James responded weakly, his eyes darting around from the lack of confidence in his answer. It was clear it wasn't just once. It felt ridiculous to pursue it any further, so I dropped the subject. The next day, I told my sons about James's unfaithfulness. They are in sixth grade now, old enough to understand that hurting and betraying others is wrong. I apologized for having such a serious conversation with my sons during this sensitive time in their lives. They said they wanted to talk it over alone and went to their room. After just a few minutes, they came out with their bags packed and said, We're on your side, Mom. I couldn't help but cry. The boys laughed and comforted me as I apologized again. Then we went back to my parents' house. My parents were shocked when they heard about Hannah and James's actions. Despite being happy that Hannah and I had become close as sisters again, I felt sorry. Hannah hasn't changed after all. I'm sorry for always making you endure her. We'll keep our distance from Hannah and James to the bare minimum, Dad said, and I felt relieved. From that day, I started commuting to work from my parents' home. James, perhaps on suspension, didn't come to the office but called me multiple times instead. Ignoring him as I didn't have time to deal with it, he began to send messages day and night, I love you, Sandra. Let's live happily as a family of four again. I was insane. I was just deceived by that woman. I don't know how to live without you, Sandra. These were what you'd call desperate pleas. I was almost fooled for a moment, but thanks to my sons laughing uproariously at those messages, I realized how ridiculous they were. However, I couldn't ignore him forever. Eventually, I had to meet him to sign the divorce papers. I made plans to meet James at a cafe on my day off, following Kevin's advice to meet in a public place to keep the conversation calm. When Kevin and Hannah arrived at the cafe together, Hannah had become so thin in just a few days she looked like a different person. Now both Hannah and James, please sign the divorce papers, I said. They hesitated to sign. James said, it's a misunderstanding, Kevin. It's your choice to divorce, but we won't. You're still saying that. My sons and I no longer consider you family, I retorted. Kevin sighed deeply and said, you could go to court, but it's clear you'll lose, considering the alimony and legal fees for the divorce trial. Can you afford it? Of course, you both betrayed your families. Hannah to me and Sandra James, you'll have to pay us a proper settlement in the divorce trial, I added. Hannah started trembling silently. Her silence and weight loss now made sense. I might be fired. How can I pay? James began to argue, looking pale. You did this to yourself. Besides, you owe child support for both kids, right? I said. At my words, Hannah flinched. You wanted to live together, right? You're welcome to have the house. I laughed loudly. And don't forget the mortgage payments. James was taken aback probably having forgotten about the mortgage. Both sat sweating, pale and silent, in front of the divorce papers. Later, Kevin introduced me to a lawyer, and I managed to claim alimony and legal fees and finalize the divorce. James, who had resisted the divorce so much, proposed to Hannah immediately after our divorce was finalized. I knew he had liked Hannah from the start. When did their affair turn serious? Hearing this, I felt nothing but disdain. Meanwhile, Hannah, who had genuinely loved Kevin, was abandoned and eventually lost her job too. 
Why did she end up with James despite loving Kevin so much? Remaining puzzled, I asked Kevin about it. He hesitated before revealing. Actually, she started complaining about you a few months ago. Complaining about how you, who were useless, got married and even have kids. It's extravagant, he explained. Could it really be because of that? I wondered, but considering Hannah's personality, it wasn't impossible. Yet the thought that she went to such lengths just to set me up was horrifying. It was because I thought you might be in danger that I consulted you, Timothy, but I never imagined it would lead to this with James. I'm truly sorry, Kevin said apologetically. It's okay, it's over now, and James is to blame for taking up Hannah's invitation as well, I replied. That concluded our conversation. Kevin and I agreed to keep in touch for updates on the divorce compensation and legal consultations. According to him, the two, burdened with a substantial amount of divorce compensation, ended up marrying and living together. Hannah was abandoned by her parents and had nowhere else to go. It seemed she reluctantly accepted James's proposal because she had no family left. From what the lawyer told me, Hannah couldn't accept that she ended up divorcing Kevin and marrying James, whom she didn't love because of me. The lawyer mentioned getting hurled with abusive language every time he called her. While I felt sorry for the lawyer, he continued to support me firmly, perhaps because of Kevin's presence, and I couldn't be more grateful. For a while, we'll still have to make calls to demand the divorce compensation, and it seems. Six years after the divorce, the compensation and child support were being paid on time, and I had largely healed from my emotional wounds. One day, after a long period of peace, the lawyer contacted me saying Hannah had something urgent to discuss. Knowing her, I expected she would just use the meeting to vent her frustrations at me, so I initially refused. However, Hannah insisted it was urgent, and James also requested a meeting on her behalf. Given their persistence, I reluctantly agreed, but I didn't want to meet them alone. I contacted Kevin, feeling somewhat guilty for doing so after such a long time, but he gladly agreed to accompany me. At the cafe, James and Hannah looked serious. When Hannah saw me, she looked slightly relieved. What's this about? Why did you call me here? I asked. Hannah then revealed, Actually, I've developed renal failure and need to undergo dialysis. James angrily blamed us, saying, It's your fault, both of your faults, that Hannah ended up like this. She couldn't sleep without drinking alcohol, and because of the divorce settlement pain, she had to work. Your actions have destroyed her health. I thought it was their own doing, and Kevin seemed to agree as he sighed and looked exasperated. So what, I'm not reducing or refunding the divorce settlement. Be thankful I agreed to installments, I stood firm. Hannah, crying, lowered her head and pleaded, I'll pay the divorce settlement. Please, I'm begging you, give me a kidney. What? I exclaimed loudly at her outrageous request. What are you talking about? There's no way I'll give it to you. James then said, You were born a twin with Hannah for this reason. You have a duty to help her. What are you talking about? Who has been pushing all the unpleasant things onto me? Did Hannah ever help me once in such situations? I retorted, Don't talk about trivial matters. Hannah's life is at stake here, James angrily retorted. Hannah began to cry and plead, apologizing, while James insulted me as heartless, pressuring me for the transplant as if threatening. At that moment, feeling as though I was being blamed, Kevin spoke up, If she needs dialysis, then undergo dialysis. Do you understand how tough dialysis is, and do you understand how difficult a transplant is? Why should she risk her life for Hannah? Their words left them speechless. I felt relieved with Kevin's support and took a deep breath. Moreover, Hannah, you've repeatedly called Sandra useless. Isn't it too convenient to ask for help only when you're in trouble? But that's Hannah for you. You've destroyed Sandra's happy life. Sandra has no obligation to save your life, Kevin pointed out. Hannah broke down crying, and James was at a loss for words. 
Both of them must have thought that I would surely give them a kidney. If I had been alone, I might have been persuaded. Once again, Kevin saved me. Take care then. Oh, and don't forget the transfer for this month's payment, I said, then got up and left. Whether I'm called heartless or a devil, I cannot forgive them. I don't know what kind of life they will lead from now on, but I hope they never forget what they did and reflect on it. It seems James and Hannah were both working part-time to make ends meet, but now that Hannah can no longer work properly, their financial situation is dire. But that's their karma. Everything is the result of their actions. Their atonement won't end until they've paid the compensation ordered in the divorce settlement. I continue to live happily with my parents and sons. My parents no longer even mention Hannah's name. However, it seems they are happy to see the twins getting along well. It's comforting to see a bond between my sons that Hannah and I never had. I continue to keep in touch with Kevin frequently. He's a genuinely good person, always thoughtful and considerate. It appears he has developed feelings for me, but I'm not ready to reciprocate them at this time. I don't want to cause any more upset for my sons, but in a few years, when they come of age, I hope to have the chance to think about my own happiness again.